What's going on guys, Andrew with Pride. We've got Coach Alex from Kabuki and Miss Kitty here today. We're gonna to be demonstrating a squat. Squat. So, take it away. <laughs> okay. Um, so we've already seen the deadlift video, right? We're we gonna assume that, we're gonna assume people yep, have yep. seen this. We're assuming you've seen the deadlift. And if you haven't, where is it, where is it at? Right here. We all point in different directions. That's <laughs> super handy. Okay. I put it that way. Someone's okay. gonna find it. Yeah. Um, okay, sweet. So a squat, how do we find a squat? Bending knees, bending hips at the same time? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's a knee bend. A knee bend. Getting your ass close to the ground. Yeah, it definitely used to be called a knee bend. If you look in the Russian literature, it just still says knee bend. Does it really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so meow, just uh, bend your knees, bend your hips. Sweet. You're so Asian. If we understand how to, to squat, okay, we would say, okay, we need to have the same position as a deadlift. So when we talk about bracing in a deadlift, we talk about the same thing as squat, okay? So if I walk up and jab her, braced, right? Have we? Mm -hmm. Cool. So how do we start a squat? Can you just show me a, um, a knee break in a squat? Let's give it, yeah. So this is weird, okay? Because if you break in the knee, we end up being limited in our range of motion. So just do a normal squat. So clearly Kitty can squat to depth. Right. Now break it with knee. As far as you can have a knee, far as you can have a knee. And so now it gets fucking weird, right? It just looks super uncomfortable, not quite as good depth. Really weird, right? Doesn't that feel awkward? That's weird. Yeah. Okay, so if we don't want to break him a knee, because clearly, like, I'll actually break him a knee on my squat and I'll show you what it looks like if someone doesn't have good ankles. Okay, but, so my normal squat, my hips, my, my knee break squat, and then I'm, look, that's me, okay? Sweet. God, yeah, so she just got insanely mobile ankles. Yeah, right. She actually finds range of motion by collapsing her feet a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Okay, <clears throat> sweet. So show me a hip hinge. Hinge, oh, do, do a better one. You can bend your knees. Bend my knees? Yeah, just yeah. bend. Yeah, okay, more, more. Okay, so clearly that's not a squat either, right? right. Stand up, it's just a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sweet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they are dating guys, this is not predatory. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit though, just a little bit. Okay. Okay, sweet. So we have basically somewhere between the two must fall our sweet spot. Right. So now, could you just break at the hip and the knee at the same time? I keep going. Go all the way down. Yeah, just, yeah sweet. That's a squat. Okay. Again. Sweet, so the only change up the only change from there to like a, a competition squat is putting a bar on your back. Yeah. Yeah? Sweet. So that's what a squat is. Do you want to show us with a bar on your back? So, breaking knee and hip at the same time. Straight back. <laughs> that take a step backwards. All right, you're good. Bar on. Sweet. Okay. Does that make sense in terms of what a squat is and how to perform a squat? So let's talk about the setup for a squat. Um, I'll have me do this. So, first things first on a squat, take your hands off. Probably the most overlooked part of a squat is where people put their hands, okay? Um, people don't think about it, people assume it's unimportant. And that, and that makes things real squiggly, mm. okay? Which is a technical term I use. I don't really care where the hands go as long as they're equidistant, right? Um, now there is a best place for it, okay? And the best place for your hands is where you can create the most tension in the back. You know, we spoke on the deadlift, we said, hey, we've got to create this tension to get a good transfer of energy, yeah? So Kitty actually knows where her hands go because she's a good lifter, okay? But you notice, so we're even trying, like, equidistant, okay? Yep. Sweet. Now, if she takes a bar, uh, goes super wide, Super, super wide, go to the right hook, yeah. If she takes this, she can stand under the bar, just unrack like this. She can still unrack the bar like this, this is all fine, okay? God, that looks so gross. I bet that feels weird, right? Yeah. At this point, one, you look at the elbow flare, this is always gonna cause her to fall forward. The yeah. elbow's right back there. So, so what he's talking about, just to be clear, is the elbows are so <laughs> elevated just to create this position. Yeah. So she, she yeah. can tuck under, but obviously it's still a suboptimal position. Yeah. It's harder. Yeah, harder. And it's harder for her to create tension in the back, harder for her to pull in the bars. Wait, bar back in. You, you okay? Mm -hmm. So for anybody who, who's like wondering why that's hard, just think of it like um, 
doing a really like close pull up versus doing a really, really wide pull up. That tension is still harder to create. Yeah. Now, we could get in a position where, can you take like an extra narrow grip? Can you still fit under the bar? Yeah. Okay. We could take this position, and this is what a lot of people do. They say, okay, I'm just going to take it now as if I can, because right. that must be the tightest. Okay, you don't have to actually lift it. Plus. So give me a good hand. <laughs> so if we get Andrew to stand, we're going to come this way. Okay, I want you to grab me, turn side on, side on face camera. Okay, I'm gonna, Andrew, pull me towards you. It's hard as fuck, right? Yep. Okay, it's because I'm really heavy. <laughs> now, bend your arm, right in close, pull me, pull me towards you. Then no, you're just leaning away from me. Wait, pull me, yeah, hard as fuck, right? <laughs> yep. Now find the middle position, right here, okay? And pull, pull me towards you. Yeah, you can make a lot more tension up there. Right? Mm. And that's what we're saying, when someone goes, okay, I'm going to make this tight position I can, they're not fucking creating tension with that, they're just getting fucking squished. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Which is making them feel like they're creating tension yeah. because they're squished. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, not, wow, right. it's, it's not like, optimal. Oh, compact. Yeah. It's like, um, are you familiar with the FRC stuff? Uh, Okay, do you, do you know about, oh, I forgot what it's called. There's an optimal like range, arrangement of sarcomeres in the muscle, okay? okay? Where we have, if our muscle fibers are too far apart, it's a weird way of putting it, it's hard to create maximal tension. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay? If there's too much it's too close, tank, yeah, there's too enough tension, yeah? yeah. Well, here's a length tension relationship. That's yeah, thank called. you, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we want to be in a position where we have optimal length tension relationship in everything, by the way. So, where our hands are for Kitty, this is the best place for a squat, okay? Um, if you want to find it for yourself, probably pull-up position, probably. Yeah. That little hand thing is quite handy to, to figure out real quick, but for you, just, okay. So our hands are equidistant. She get under the bar, this should sit, don't lift up, yep. This should sit in the middle of her back, okay? Now, high bar versus low bar, uh, don't care. Put it where it's comfy, okay? okay? Yeah. I mean, yes, a low bar position, like really, really low bar does shorten the lever. Um, and then we end up with a really back dominant squat because it's a shoulders lever again. Some people are good at it, some people aren't. Mm -hmm. Don't, just do what works for you. Okay, unrack. Okay, so when Kitty unracks, you see, she puts a center row of feet under the bar. Okay, and she has a close stance. Walk in. If, can you unrack with a wide stance? Okay, if you unwrap with a wide stance up, so, go backwards. Do you see, you see this shit? Yeah. Where it hits the back? I'm waddle. Yeah, isn't that bullshit? Yeah. Okay, so. That's funny, I, I never thought about that. I just always told people, hey, like, stand straight up and walk back. Yeah, if, you, if you're in too much of a wide stance, you have to go. Yeah, you do that. Okay, like, where we're, we're gonna be here. Yeah, sweet. Okay, that's, that's really overlooked a lot of time. Yeah, okay. Dude, that's a that's a very good point though. I never thought yeah. about that. It just kind of was there. Yeah. yeah, it's a big deal when, especially when you're trying to max or something. Imagine trying to unwrap oh. and then like the bar is just so unstable, yeah, your yeah, whole body's wobbling shit. and yeah, like shit. yeah, and then you already lose a lot of energy just from that. Mm. Yeah, for real. Like, All right, I'm back again. Sorry, babe. Okay, at this point, she's not doing it right now because it's super light. We would we would actually create a brace now. Okay, because we do. You good? Sweet, step back. It's the fewest steps we can get away with. Yeah, um, doesn't have to be free, it'd just be nice to be free. Then, what do you do now, babe? Hmm? What did you do now? Feet. Sweet, okay. That's the right answer, by the way. We create tension at the foot. We've already got a brace set up. Um, so for Kitty, it's just this case of driving the ankles open. So what he's, uh, what he's talking about for driving the ankles open, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Mm -hmm. I believe it is basically think of the outside of the feet pressing outwards. So she's more or less kind of putting some weight onto the outside of the foot, emphasizing that arch a tiny bit. Yeah, so if we talk about foot, you that. If we talk about foot position, we want to create a touch pod, right? So we have four points of contact. Right. Yeah, which will be a uh, ball of the foot, yeah, big toe, the, I say the same thing, okay. Outside of the foot, so we'd have, if this is a foot, ball of the foot, outside of the foot, heel, and then little toe, yeah. all down, okay? Then we're gonna push them apart, cool. And we're gonna try and push through the middle of the foot at the same time as doing that. There you go. Nice, that's actually one of the best squats you've done. It's good. <laughs> I gotta emphasize this, by the way, because this is something I overlooked for a long time, is that like quadruped or tripod foot, um, however you wanna call it. 
um, but literally just for me personally, finding the weight onto the, I'm pointing to a broken wrist, <laughs> finding the weight uh, on the outside of my foot, actually being able to create that little drive outward completely changed the way that I was squatting. Was like one of the first times that I actually started feeling my glutes activating equally. Yeah, it's a big deal. Creating, creating that, um, that force. We've, we've got a, we, well, we have an acceptable range of pronation or supination of the foot, okay? So we, we don't want to be, we, we don't want to be here and we equally don't want to be here, okay? We want to be in the middle. So most people will naturally fall into this position. So that's pronation, by the yeah. way, as the foot falling in there. Yeah, well, and supination open. If we're saying only people on the outside of the foot, we end up having this, okay? Which is just as bad as having this, right. okay? So, and this is the problem with the whole knees out cueing, yeah. okay? We say knees out cueing, people do this, and they'll over roll. Yep, yep. So what I would rather say the knees out, I say ankles open, because that just puts me in the right place, and I rotate. Okay, let me squat. Sweet. Okay, then everything else that applied in the deadlift applies to this. Yeah. Like top bracing, break of the hips, and bring your hips back, hips forward. Show us. So, equidistant hands, brace, close, nice, step back, perfect. Feet, feet, foot brace. Nice walk in. Can you explain some of that, or some more specifics of what she's actually doing in that brace? So she's creating that downward pull. She's obviously got the the breath and tensing up the yeah. core. Anything else major going yeah. on there? Yeah, we'll do. Okay, so one look. I'm a gangster. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have different ideas of how to brace, right? We have an abdominal brace, which is what we spoke about in a deadlift video, creating a tension here. We also have like a shoulder brace, which is when we have a tension pulling on the bar to tie the lats into the abdominals, okay? So we, we would assume you don't have to have to brace, okay? We, we'd assume that when we actually have this brace going on, it's really, really good, right. okay? When we tense the lats, it creates a connection point here. Mm -hmm. So we actually have a really, really stable spine. You can think of it as, um, I think of it as a suspension bridge. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, multiple guidelines, between cross tension or sensegrity, if you want to call it that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. Uh, on top of that, we'd have that foot brace, which we spoke about before, about creating tension of the foot, like grabbing the floor, driving outwards, rotating at the same time. So I would just, I would think that's how I'd say what bracing is, but I might be in a situation where like, I talk about bracing all day, every day, so maybe I'm overlooking some. It's Honestly, some. I, I feel like that pretty much gets everything. The, yeah. the only other thing that I would say is, um, I've, I've heard two different schools of thought, which one is pull down and the other is pinch back. I pull down. I pull yeah. down as well. I think pinch back is, is an error. I, I kind of agree with yeah. you, because I feel, I feel like pinch back just makes you mm -hmm. pop, exactly. I, I would say it's even more basic than that. Um, I would say that this is light, this is heavy, mm -hmm. okay? So when I pinch backwards, what I do is I, I have this position, or I have this position, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this position is further away from my spine. Oh, that's a good So I create a bigger x-axis, <clears throat> yeah. so it's make a harder lift. Yeah, one of the only things that I really say to people, and you feel free to give mm -hmm. feedback on that, is have the shoulders back enough that you at least have a little ledge to uh, set the bar on. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a crutch for just having a poor bar position. Really? Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't think you need to do that. Um, I think we can actually, actually have this position here and the bar should just sit on our back. Like I'm not squeezing at all, I'm actually pulling downwards. Would you say that kind of matters on their level of muscular development? <sighs> yeah, probably. Okay, because that's usually, yeah. I, it's only the like, pinch the shoulder blades back if they're like, oh, the bar hurts. I'm like, all right, let's it, So this is actually a really big deal. Um, so people do this to a barbell and I'll put it, if you can see where the bar is on my back. So swing around the back. Oh, I'll see it's a squat, they'll do it here, okay? And this is sitting on top of that atlas bone. Right. And people will say, dude, the barbell hurts. And I'm like, yeah, because you've got a steel bar sat on a bone. Yeah. Okay, that's fucking dumb. <laughs> right? Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't just like... Basic, <laughs> basic shit. I yeah, agree. You, wouldn't, you wouldn't put it on your wrist, right? Yeah. I mean, I okay. definitely wouldn't right now. No. So what I would say is, okay, someone's saying to me, okay, this, this barbell hurts. I'm like, okay, put a bit lower down. Like, even just, just below the bone, uh -huh. that's still much more comfortable. And you don't need much muscularity to move the barbell down an inch. Yeah, yeah, I get you. That's a good point. So um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that too, too much. Um, but I also probably wouldn't start people off back squats anyway. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. So there's that. Um, it's not quite the opener. No. <laughs> Unless someone's a power lifter. Yeah, exactly. But that, that's different. Okay, um, so anything else Com I'd say in this Common course? faults, anything like that? Obviously, you've got like the, the chest fall and stuff. And yeah, so do you want to jump into chest fall? Uh, you got pronation. Yeah. 
Yeah. Just do a good morning. So chest full pass on the squat is, is the most common error. Um, and it's a real pain in the ass to fix do, as well. I'm gonna do a low bar squat. Sweet. It'll, it'll definitely make my chest fall. <laughs> it always does. Yeah. <laughs> Um, also, just if you display a common fault, does not make you a bad squatter. I, I coached a European champion um, powerlifter, right? right? She had a uh, chest full pound every single squat. She was still European champion, right? She has her hips going to raise up early. That's so weird for you, isn't it? Yeah, down. Yeah, so to fix that, we're going to have multiple interventions, okay, depending on what works for the individual. Most of the time, I would say do a pin squat. Okay, because if we have someone do, if we have someone do a pin squat, this might not that that's Yeah, that uh, might be too too low for me. So someone do a pin squat, right? Golly. <laughs> yeah, it's very low. Yeah. So essentially, what a pin squat is, guys, is he'd be it'd be sitting on here. Yeah. And he would just come straight up from. So yeah. Imagine that he's sitting um, on the on, pins, right? Yeah, exactly. And if I drive in a pin squat, but I don't keep my chest up, this happens. Okay, I just don't lift the bar. So when I do a pin squat, the only way to complete the movement is by doing it right. Yeah. Right, and if you can block off poor movement, then you only get good movement. Right. So win. So that's one way. <coughs> uh, poor squats are the same thing. Okay. Pa oh, poor squat. Yeah, poor squats would be the same thing. Um, anything else? Uh, again, there's like val valgus and oh, oh. talking about corrections. Yeah, corrections for yeah, I, I, would, I would say eccentrics and then. Yeah. As much as I hate to like use this as the thing, you can also just like develop your glutes and like just focus on the pattern a little bit more. Yeah. A, a lot of times it's you know you're you're overloading what your body's capable of yeah. in that moment, or you just have like funky movement patterns and sometimes you just need to retrain them. Yeah. There are some cases where there is literally just like a muscle deficiency. You know, some yeah. people just their glutes don't. I, this is not technical. <laughs> glutes aren't not firing. They're just not firing quite yeah. as much as they maybe should be. Yeah, I struggled to find that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a poor... It's not fully fired. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's, just, it's just poor recruitment or they're, yeah. being, they're being overpowered by uh, other muscles. Yeah, I say poor sequencing. Yeah, ex yeah boom. It's just, it's just poor sequencing. Yeah. Okay, so I, I would do those ones. Yeah, the eccentrics are quite like... I, do, I give a lot of eccentric lifts out. Um, other faults is knee claps, so knee valgus. Um, just show us the knee claps in your squat, babe. Oh my god, <laughs> isn't that awful? <laughs> it looks so bad. Um, how do I fix knee collapse? Firstly, I would actually make sure the feet were right. If we are, oh, I'll just, if we're predisposed to having uh, ankles which do this, okay, uh, so if I'm predisposed to folding inwards, then I'm always going to collapse, okay? But if I can fix some ankles, it's very, very easy to get it right. So that would be my first kind of call. Um, I'd also say if this musculature isn't good, like the bracing isn't good, you're probably going to be predisposed to that as well. Yep. Um, interventions in terms of exercise, you can band it, I guess, if you really want to. Yeah, so what he's talking about here is just like creating a band at the knee where you're yep. literally just having something to yeah. do. Again, it's, it's, it's R&T work. Yeah. R&T work. Oh, yeah, or, it's, or the ankle, that's another thing too, because it's, and it kind of matters on the, or it depends on the individual. Some people are collapsing more at the foot, some people are collapsing more at the knee, but it visually can look the same. Yeah. Um, we at uh, Kabuki do a lot of stuff with bands around the ankles and around the toes, um, which is very uncomfortable but works really, really well. So look at that. I, I've used paw squats pretty successfully. I actually quite like a box squat for it. Yeah, I, I actually, I actually like it as well because it kind of gives people something to. Again, it's, it's similar to like a pin squat, just kind of from a different position. Yeah, and for me, like that, the box squat addresses hip weakness right. and it makes it really hard to collapse. Because if you're so wide anyway, like you're just, you're not gonna. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then you could look at muscular weakness. Uh, one, one thing, if you can expand on it a little bit more, because I, I, um, I've used the, you know, creating like little wedges and stuff yeah. like that. So sometimes, uh, sometimes guys, it's literally just like sliding some five pound like weights mm -hmm. under your heels and that'll be enough for you. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, this is gonna change your mechanics so much that it's gonna damage your pattern, like your squat pattern down the road. What would you say to that? I, this conversation literally happened a week ago. I, mean, so I, would, I, would, I would say no. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think. It too. Like, unless this is something you're overloading like crazy. And the thing is, it's, this isn't like a forever thing. Like if you, if you have to uh, create a wedge at the ankle, like you're still needing to mobilize the ankle and still find a way to, to like actually get into that position. 
um, as opposed to just relying on that for yeah. Every hour. Like, so we we create the smallest intervention possible um, always. Okay, yeah. but the idea that if I'm going to squat with my heels elevated, it's going to ruin my pattern of squatting. I, I would do something like this. Meow. Yeah, can, can come come, friend. Okay, this is a super, super easy example. Mm. She has no idea what's going to happen now, boy. Just jog backwards. Jog. Okay. Jog forwards. Jog backwards. And jog forwards. Does the jog backwards and forwards look significantly different after doing the alternate one? No. No. Really? So yeah. why the fuck would a heels elevated squat change a, a normal squat? Like. Like just because you're doing a different movement. Shit, man, that's a really good analogy. <laughs> like, actually. like it doesn't like just because like I throw a basketball and I throw a rugby ball. Like I don't throw a rugby ball like a basketball just because I've done it once. Like, like damn. Yeah, that's, dude. That's not how it squat, works. Squat experts hate this one trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah, no. I'd, dude, I, that's a great analogy, actually. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of that. Sweet. Um, well, anything else you want to close out? That's what you should have titled the video. Yeah, so squat <laughs> experts hate this one trick. Yeah, yeah squat more. Um, <laughs> do I have anything to say about squats? Yeah, I, it was similar to the deadlift actually. Where I'm saying, like, well, if you don't need to do a straight bar, 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 back squat, probably don't do it unless you want to. Find a, find a variation that works better for you. Yeah, boom, there we go. Yeah, I have, yeah. A, I have one client who absolutely hates back squatting. Yeah. Let's front squatting. I'm like, great, let's front squat all yeah. day. Front squat's great movement. Yeah, do that. 100%. I, I love that, dude. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, Sweet. Uh, that being said, then, guys, my name's Andrew with Pride. We got uh, Coach Alex with Kabuki, Miss Kitty, and we'll see y'all later. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thanks for watching. If you liked this clip, if you got a lot of value out of it, which you know you did, go ahead and show this to someone else who needs to hear it. And make sure that you like and subscribe wherever you're viewing this. Uh, we've got a YouTube, we've got an Instagram, we've got all that jazz. Go give us some love and I'll see y'all there. Later.